All right, everybody, so we're going to be starting a series that I like to call uh, Magic in Movies, and this is going to be time to our transitions video because a transition is an in-camera effect, and that is really where movie magic and special effects started. It started with um, in-camera effects and just people being clever with the way they started and stopped movies and positioned the cameras to create special effects. And so we're going to get started with a little bit of film history with the Lumiere brothers. Now, Edison was the first person to create film, and Edison didn't actually create the invention of film, he was kind of a conglomerate of inventors. He had a bunch of people working for him, and once they created something, because he funded their research, he would then put his name on it. And then, of course, they would get like a subnote, like assisted by blah 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 blah, but he pretty much was taking credit for a lot of other people's inventions. And so Edison's name is on a, are on a lot of inventions that he didn't actually create, and film is one of them. But the Lumiere brothers are the first people to have filmed and project um, displayed a film project. And so this scene right here, it's called the train coming into station. They projected it out onto a um, big screen and legend has it, it's film legend, that when the train came at the people in the theater, they all got up and screamed and took off in fear because the tr they thought the train was going to come through the screen. Now, according to research, what usual, what they're pretty sure actually happened was people were so excited to see this style of filmmaking in a big screen that they, yes, they screamed and stood up and cheered, but not because they were scared, but because they were excited for what this meant for entertainment. Now back to Edison's invention, the birth of cinema started with the Nickelodeon, which started as a little box right here that you could actually sit down and or look into and watch. Now Edison really loved the Nickelodeons in a serve by serve because he could make more money off, off of them. He was all interested in getting as many different people like making money on it and uh, so he really went all in on the Nickelodeons which were five cents and that's how they got into it so whoever created the Nickelodeon channel was feeling extra clever that day. So um, it did grow into full theaters and so you ended up having the Nickelodeon theaters where you would pay a nickel to get in but it started with a box. Now, after uh, like that kind of started, um, people started the hunger for more and more dramatic um, action started to become more and more of a thing. For instance, you started with the train coming into the station, but people didn't want to see that all the time, and so they wanted something more exciting. So they actually decommissioned trains, like theaters would or cameramen or film producers would buy decommissioned trains and they would film them blowing up or crashing or something and people go and they would watch it live and they would record it and they would fill the theaters just watching people like watching trains explode. Well after that kind of ran out people wanted to see people doing dramatic things and so the birth of the stuntman happened. Now during this time it was also the Great Depression so people were out of work and desperate and so there's uh, an old film tale where stunt men would actually sit around a tree outside of Hollywood, outside of the studios, and they would just um, sit there and the director would come out and said, hey, I'm going to pay $10 for anyone who's willing to jump off a building. And they would just do this. Now later, um, as they got more organized, there was actually price settings set to each thing. For example, uh, jumping off of a building was like $10, uh, rolling a car was like $50, jumping off of a horse was $50, but jumping off of a horse and getting drug underneath a wagon was $100. And so they were able to put price tags to what they did, but originally they were just poor men with no training willing to do scary things for, to make just a little bit of money because during the Great Depression people were busy or were poor and the, the film industry was actually the one thing that was still making money during the Great Depression because it was cheap enough that people could actually go watch things but it wasn't as expensive as some of the other entertainments that were out there. So there were still, like, movies were still making money, but just not a lot. All right, so then um, let's get into the actual magic of movies. So George Méliès was a stage music mu magician that saw the potential in film, as you saw in the video that we watched before um, or that you should have watched. Uh, he, his camera pretty much jammed, and he was able to see that things turned into different things once the camera stopped. And so he was able to create a bunch of different camera effects. Um, he used stop motion to create the look of flight. He used um, practical effects like people's faces in the moon, as you can see this is one of his most famous movies and it's called Trip to the Moon. Um, 
And he was, uh, he just pretty much changed a bunch of different ways that you could create in-camera effects. Um, so we have another little video that's going to show you a bunch of different random in-camera effects, but he was like the master of transitions. However, on the sad part, he actually accumulated a lot of debt. And so he had to shut down um, and many of his master negatives were lost to Silver the Silver. Now you might be wondering, how, what, what do you mean the silver? So the original film was filmed on silver with silver nitrate. The film was soaked in it. And so if you burned down the film that it was on, you would be left with the silver powder left over and the silver was very valuable. And so that's what it was. And during a war time, it was even more valuable. And so just kind of keep that in mind. So that was what ended up happening. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we got into debt. But Melies had a really great studio. So look at how he created a greenhouse for his studio. And so all the natural light would come in so he could then have um, higher frame rates and be able to have these great sets without having to worry about the elements ruining a rainy, having a rainy day ruining his filming. He could film right inside of his studio and create these really elaborate, um, beautiful set pieces that then he could control. And he was kind of the first sci-fi um, uh, director. In fact, the trip to the moon is considered the first science fiction film. All right, so then the decline. So this is a picture of Melies as a younger man. And Tom Edison... Thomas Edison is known for two things, being an inventor and kind of being a terrible person. Um, and as we keep talking about many different inventions that you know that he has his name on to, you're going to start to see that more and more. Um, so he created the Motion Picture Patent Company in order to control the film industry. And Melies and several other directors joined it. Now, he ended up putting these really difficult... Um, uh, expectations on films like you had to use so many rolls of film and film was expensive hence because of the silver nitrate thing and he had you had to use that much film otherwise you couldn't be a part of it and you had to pay a fee because you were now part of the patent company and so the fees were adding up his membership was adding up and he had to make so many more films and he was an elaborate filmmaker he it took him a really long time a lot of you can probably relate to Melies like you have a big idea and I don't give you enough time to actually execute it. So kind of remember that when you're thinking of that. I don't mean to be the Thomas Edison in this story, but sometimes I am. So anyway, Melies couldn't keep up with the demanding film requirements and as well as the he had a few uh, outstanding legal issues that he had against Edison. He left it and he had fees to pay and all of that compiled that he had too much debt he could not keep making movies and so he had to sell um, destroy a lot of his negatives. Now this was a huge loss for the film history because his films were one of a kind and wonderful and so he actually fell into disarray and all of his stuff was lost, people forgot about him, and then later on his stuff was rediscovered and many of his films that had been put into dis distribution were actually discovered and he was then re-discovered um, as a famous director and was brought back into the public. The movie Hugo is actually based on the rediscovery of Melies and there they take a lot of um, creative uh, what's it McCall? It let a creative license when they made that movie, but for the most part, he was rediscovered and then he was um, brought into the film uh, Hall of Fame for it. He's now well-renowned and as many of his films as possible have been restored and you can watch actually Trip to the Moon almost entirely on uh, YouTube. All right, so in-camera effects. I'm gonna play this little guy right here and just kind of watch a few of these really cool in-camera effects. I'm going to stop it so I can actually make it big for us. Ah, no. Okay, there, I got it working. So notice how this one was all perspective, which is pretty cool.
So in this one, all they did was mask it. This is actually quite possible for you to do in most editing software. So just put two versions of it. All right, so I'm going to stop right there. One thing that um, it went really fast, but Buster Keaton actually did do that stunt at the end, which then ties back into some of the stunts were just stunts. So you're, you're going to want to watch um, this one if you haven't. It's over on your... Um, uh, it's over on the yesterday's Google Classroom, so make sure that you watch this um, before you do your final piece. Um, so the rules of magic never reveal your secrets. Ex except for that's a complete lie. You want to make sure that you find all the secrets and share your cool tools. So as you're doing this, remember the one thing that you want to do is find a way of getting your hands on a tripod or some way to stabilize your film. So like when you do your transitions, if you move the camera, it is going to destroy the look. So this is the first rule of your secret tip movie magic is always use some sort of stabilization so that your camera doesn't move. Make sure that when you start it and you end it, it's in the same place unless you are using using it to transition to a different location. That's the only time you would move your camera and even then you'd want to keep it roughly at the same level otherwise you're going to kind of throw off what you're doing unless you're falling from it. And then always know your end goal. What are you trying to make with it? Are you creating a fight scene with the camera? Are you just um, trying on different clothes and you're trying to pretend like you're a witch? Are you trying to um, create like some sort of music video where it looks like you're walking in and out of the frame and creating different outfits are you what is the purpose of it so always think what are you creating and why and that will give you a lot more motivation to make what you're making is it going to go on TikTok? is it going to go on youtube do you just want to have a good grade make sure that you know your end goal and that will make it a lot easier to make a good film and then be consistent like don't just have one like do, try and make, do all your filming all at once have a plan before you start and then make sure that your lighting is the same unless you're transitioning from like your transition is time and place make sure that you have find a way of just filming everything at the same time having a plan before you get go in allows you to do that um so here it's just some other ones i'm gonna like i'm just gonna get rid of those um so our tricks for today that you're going to be doing is you're doing transitions so those are your big transition tricks so how are you going to do it? are you going to do snaps are you going to do the hand of the camera are you going to do the sweatshirt face palm um, are you going to um be uh, like jumping like you could jump in place and your outfit could change you could do one where you walk behind a pole and when you go through one side of the pole you dress like one way and you go the other side you dress another or maybe you're doing like location changes where you're punching and then you're suddenly somewhere else figure out re do some research and find the best way of creating all of these different transitions remember your final um, thing that you want to create should have five transitions in it, five transitions in it so that it looks um, like you actually did some research and you've tried some new things and you really feel confident in it so once you go into it. other movie making things these uh, transitions are just on the tip of your fingers and you have had experience doing them so it's almost natural just to throw them out and create more interesting films using these transitions. This is also going to help us move into our next film. So that is all for today. Don't forget you have a little worksheet afterwards. I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation. Have a great day. Bye!